everything is fine. Okay, 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 good. Yeah, yeah. Thing, yeah. So, hello everyone and welcome to our webinar series organized by IEEE MTT student by chapter IATBH Varanasi and IEEE MTS Young Professional Community. So, today we have a webinar on radar cross-section analysis of a finite parallel plate waveguide with material loading and that is a rigorous winner hub approach by Professor Kajua Kobayashi who is currently professor at Cho University, Tokyo. So now I would like to invite Dr. Somak Bhattacharya to introduce our speaker, Professor Kobayashi. So over to Dr. Somak Bhattacharya. Okay, so thank you Dipti Ranjan and welcome you all for this webinar by Professor Kobayashi. So let me quickly introduce Professor Kobayashi who received his BS, MS and PhD degrees all in electrical engineering from Waseda University, Tokyo, Japan in 1977, 79, and 82, respectively. In 1982, he joined the Department of Electrical, Electronic, and Communication Engineering, Chuo University, Tokyo, Japan, where he has been professor since 1995. He held central management positions at Chuo University, including Vice President, Director of International Center, and Secretary to President. Dr. Kobayashi held visiting professor and visiting scientist positions at various institutions, including Macquarie University, Sydney, Australia, Karpenko Physico Mechanical Institute of the National Academy of Sciences of Ukraine, Physical Research Laboratory, Ahmedabad, India, Institute of Radio Physics and Electronics of the National Academy of Sciences of Ukraine, Kharkov, University of Wisconsin, Madison, USA. He has been adjunct professor at the Electromagnetics Academy at Zhejiang University, Hangzhou, China since 2004, and honorary professor at Amity University, Noida, India since 2019. Dr. Kobayashi received a number of distinguished awards, including the President's Award from URSI for his leadership and untiring efforts in initiating, organizing, and establishing APRESC as one of the RC flagship meetings, the Governor's Award from Toyama Perfectual Government, Japan, for outstanding contribution to the promotion of tourism in Toyama Perfecture and raising international recognition through the holding of large scale international conference, JNTO based international convention award from Japan National Tourism Organization, the government of Japan for outstanding contribution to the invitation of large scale international congresses to Japan. M.A. Kizniak Award at 16th International Conference of Mathematical Methods in Electromagnetic Theory for Contribution to Electromagnetic Theory. Dr. Kobayashi is a member of Science Council of Japan, Fellow of the Electromagnetics Academy, and a Fellow of URSI. He has held various important positions in the international radio science and electromagnetics optics communities, including Vice President of URSI since 2021, Vice Chair and Chair of URSI Commission B, URSI Assistant Secretary General for APRESC, President of the Japan National Committee of URSI, Chair of the Pyers Awards Committee, the Electromagnetics Academy, Series Academy of the book series, Springer Series in Optical Sciences, Springer Nature, Editor of the journal Radio Science. Dr. Kobayashi has contributed significantly to organization of numerous international conferences, including Pyers, and URSI conferences as general chair, general co-chair, and chair of the co-chair of the technical program committee. He is currently involved in organizing the 35th URSI General Assembly and Scientific Symposium, RC GAS 2023, August 2023 in Sapporo in Japan as general chair and associate scientific program coordinator, 2022 URSI Combined Atlantic Asia Pacific Radio Science Conferences as chair of the technical program committee. His research interests are in the areas including analytical regularization methods, Wiener-Hoff methods, numerical methods, electromagnetic theory, computation electromagnetics, canonical problems, scattering and diffraction, antennas and microwaves, waveguides and radar cross section, etc. So without wasting any further time, so let me, let me invite Professor Kobayashi for the talk. So what to you, Professor Kobayashi? Well, uh, thank you very much uh, for your uh, very nice introduction about me. And first of all, uh, I would like to thank uh, Professor Somak Bhattacharya for kindly inviting me 
to be a speaker for today's uh, webinar. Uh, and it's a great honor for me to give a talk on my recent uh, research to a young uh, scientist in India. So uh, let me uh, let me start start with uh, outline of uh, today's uh, presentation. Um, according to the request from uh, Professor Bhattacharya, I uh, decided to include the uh, basic uh, introduction of the uh, URSI, which is uh, abbreviation of the International Union of Radio Science. The reason for this is uh, I'm sure that everybody uh, in uh, today's uh, webinar platform uh, knows uh, IEEE, right? Uh, because IEEE is a, a world famous uh, institution, institute of the, uh, which con con uh, includes uh, uh, most of the areas in uh, electrical and electronics engineering. However, uh, on the other hand, uh, there is a, uh, a very uh, high reputation organization by name, uh, International Union of Radio Science, uh, which is uh, known as uh, RC. Uh, you can see you can see this uh, spelling, you know, URSI. URSI comes from the French uh, French word, which is uh, Union Radio Scientific Internationale, which is uh, which comes in this order. And uh, in the international uh, science organization, we very often use uh, both uh, English and the French for as official language. That is the reason why uh, some uh, international uh, organization uh, has a close connection with the French uh, language. But uh, we, we use uh, International Union of Radio Science in English. And the reason why I uh, decided to spend uh, uh, some time for giving you an idea of the RC. Uh, uh, by the way, you RSI, you, you pronounce RC, you know, RC. Uh, RC is a pronunciation of this word. And the reason why I'd like to explain uh, the activities of RC is because uh, almost everybody knows uh, IEEE, but this is not the case for RC. Uh, so, but uh, RC's activity is very well known. In particular, uh, I, I will uh, uh, give you some information later, but uh, you know, first uh, I would like to emphasize RC is uh, uh, conducting uh, very uh, 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 important activities for supporting young scientists in the worldwide uh, radio science community. So this is one of the very, uh, very important activities by RC. And uh, there are several conferences uh, organized by RC, but uh, uh, at many of the RC meetings, uh, we uh, support the young scientists so that they can come together to the Earth meeting so uh, in order to learn the uh, latest progress in the radio science research. So part one is concerned with uh, overview of International Union of Radio Science, Earthy. And uh, part two is uh, uh, what I'm using uh, in the analysis for the wave propagation problem is a Wiener Hub technique. Wiener, Wiener Hub technique. Uh, this is uh, uh, this is named after two uh, very famous mathematicians. The first uh, scientist, I'm sure you uh, all of you know, uh, this uh, first scientist Wiener is a, a scientist uh, who is very famous in uh, information theory. You know, so the Wiener Hub Wiener Hub technique was invented. Uh, a very long time ago, uh, going back to uh, 1931, if I uh, remember correctly, and they invented a very strong uh, mathematical technique for uh, the solution of the uh, certain type of uh, singular integral equations. And uh, that was, as I said, that was uh, going back to 1931. And then uh, the Wiener Hub technique was uh, known only in the mathematics field. Ma mathematics field. However, during World War II, uh, there was the first application of the Wiener Hub technique to radar scattering problems. And since then, 
uh, the many uh, scientists uh, doing the Wiener Hub technique uh, solved uh, practical uh, problem rigorously by using the Wiener Hub technique. So, my uh, part two of my talk today is uh, I uh, I'm going to uh, introduce the Wiener Hub technique. And the last topic is uh, uh, actually the title of my today's presentation, which is uh, uh, application of the uh, Wiener Hub technique to a specific uh, skeleton problem. So in this uh, part three, uh, I'm going to uh, consider a finite parallel waveguide with material loading. Uh, and uh, I, I, I'm going to analyze uh, the plane weight diffraction for by this geometry uh, for uh, E and H, uh, both polarizations by using a rigorous Wiener Hub technique. So, uh, you know, my presentation today consists of uh, these three uh, parts. And actually, uh, you know, I, uh, uh, I spend uh, several hours today to prepare uh, the complete uh, slides, which <laughs> Fortunately or unfortunately, I don't know, but uh, the total uh, pages is uh, more than 70 uh, pages. So I want to I wanna skip you know, some, uh, some part of the slides so that uh, uh, I can uh, complete uh, my uh, uh, lecture in, uh, uh, in a specified uh, time. So the first, uh, I'm going to give you some information about the uh, International Union of Radio Science. And uh, this is the outline of part one related to RC. So what is RC? And why is radio science important? And then uh, I'm going to give you some information about the RC meetings. And as I said, uh, RC uh, is uh, uh, working uh, very hard for supporting especially young scientists uh, so that they can come together to the uh, RC international meetings. So this is uh, uh, special support, financial support for young scientists, one of the most important activities. And then uh, I'm going to uh, explain a structure of the RC and then uh, RC history. And actually, uh, RC was founded uh, in 1919 so that uh, uh, RC uh, has celebrated uh, already uh, 100 years. So I'm going to tell you uh, some history information of the RC. And then uh, for your uh, information on uh, your participation in uh, future RC meetings, I'm going to give you uh, the uh, information of the um, uh, typical uh, uh, future uh, RC meetings. And then uh, the RC media membership. Uh, you know, uh, the great difference is uh, there is one uh, great difference between uh, IEEE and RC. The uh, difference is uh, uh, for IEEE, anybody who is interested in joining the IEEE can, uh, you know, just uh, submit application form to the IEEE headquarters in the uh, east coast of the United States. Then uh, you can automatically become a member, you know. Uh, probably uh, most of you know the application procedure for the membership of IEEE, but this is not, this is very different uh, in the ERSI membership. And before, uh, there are no ERSI individual membership. And usually the uh, members of the ERSI have been uh, uh, government or the scientific academy. Uh, for a long time, and ERC has introduced the individual membership only uh, several years ago. So now uh, ERC is run uh, by using uh, two membership. One is the uh, uh, country uh, country membership. The another one is uh, individual membership. So I'm going to explain a little bit little bit about this, and then uh, ERC publications. And uh, the first topic is what is ERC. And ERC is the abbreviation of this one, Union Radio Scientific Internationale, which is a French word. And 
its uh, English counterpart is uh, International Union of Radio Science. And International Union, uh, it, uh, there, are, uh, there is a the, uh, scientific organization in the world by name ISC. ISC is International Science Council. So International Science Council uh, is a, a non-profit organization and it uh, contains about uh, 40 scientific unions. So one of the uh, scientific unions is uh, RC. And as I said, uh, you pronounce this one RC. You know, RC is the uh, uh, pronunciation of this word. And the uh, role of the RC is uh, stimulates, RC stimulates and coordinates and peer research, uh, fundamental research, and applied research, which is the engineering or scientific applications in the area of radio science. And uh, uh, there is one uh, great uh, difference uh, from uh, IEEE. I, for IEEE, as you know, the Engineering Institute. However, the RC contains a science, a pure science and engineering, so that uh, one of the uh, one of the RC uh, topics is, uh, for example, radio astronomy, and uh, India is very strong in radio astronomy, as you know. So, RC is a very special organization, which is not which is not similar uh, at all to IEEE. And uh, as I said, uh, the reason why the radio science research is important is because RC can provide a uh, possibly unique link between uh, science and engineering, right? So this is the uh, uh, very unique uh, nature which uh, doesn't exist uh, in IEEE. IEEE is the engineering organization, but RC is uh, science and engineering. Uh, RC contains both science and engineering, so the spectrum is very broad, okay? And uh, in this slide, I, I'd like to explain a little bit about the RC, the so-called RC flagship meetings. The, there are three uh, RC flagship meetings uh, right now. The biggest one is uh, biggest one is the RC General Assembly and Scientific Symposium, which is held every, every three years. And we say RC GAS, okay? So in uh, year one, uh, RC GAS is held. And then one year later, uh, in the following year, the another uh, RC flagship meeting is, is held by name RC Atlantic Radio Science Conference, which is uh, abbreviated by RC AT. Rask. And there's also another uh, uh, regional uh, radio science conference by name, RC Asia Pacific Radio Science Conference by uh, revision of uh, RC AP, Rask. So these three conferences uh, circulate uh, in a three year uh, time frame, right? So if uh, if uh, General Assembly and Scientific Symposium GAS is held this year, then next year will be the year for Atlantic Radio Science Conference. And then uh, two years later uh, will be the uh, uh, year for Asia Pacific Radio Science Conference. And all of these uh, three meetings are uh, uh, very big uh, conferences. But the first one, General Assembly and Scientific Symposium is the biggest one. And with uh, uh, number of uh, participants uh, more than uh, more than uh, one thousand, and uh, RC gas, the uh, average uh, number of participation is uh, one thousand, and uh, second one Atlantic Radio Science Conference and Asia Pacific Radio Science Conference. Usually, the average uh, uh, number of participation is uh, around uh, seven hundred. So the running the RC flagship meeting is uh, most important activity by RC. So uh, every year, every year uh, there, there is a, a flagship meetings circulating like this. And also in addition to the flagship meetings of RC, there are also uh, 
different uh, uh, ERC-driven uh, meetings. The first one is uh, ERC Commission-led meetings. The one example is uh, Commission B. Uh, commission B. Uh, I'm going to explain uh, the activity of Commission. Uh, I, I, uh, there are there are actually uh, ten uh, commissions in the entire ERC, which I'm going to explain a little later. But uh, here, uh, Commission B uh, runs ERC Electromagnetic Theory Symposium every three years. That's uh, one example for commission-driven uh, uh, meeting. And also, uh, the ERC regional and national meetings. This is also very important activity by ERC uh, member countries. And uh, uh, you know, one of the one of the uh, regional activities which I would like to emphasize here is RC RCRS conference. RCRS is a regional conference on radio science, and which uh, started in, in India uh, several years ago. I think uh, already uh, close to uh, ten years ago. I think the first one was held if uh, I'm not mistaken. So this is the, uh, this is the very important uh, ERC conference uh, organized in India. And uh, Japan also uh, started to organize uh, this uh, JRSM. JRSM is Japan Radio Science Meeting. Uh, so, so the regional meeting and the national meetings are also uh, very important activities in uh, ERC member countries. And the last one is uh, uh, general support uh, can be also given to uh, specific uh, earth meetings. So uh, this is the uh, earth meetings uh, of uh, several kinds, but the the first one, earth flagship meetings, is the most important activity by earth. And uh, the uh, several years ago, the uh, meeting paper and papers are presented at the earth flagship meeting are all indexed through IEEE Explore. So this is one of the uh, advantages of the earth flagship meetings. And also, as I said before, uh, at uh, any of the earth flagship meetings, uh, ERC is uh, working very hard for supporting uh, financially the young scientists and which uh, consists of uh, two things. The first one is a student paper competition, which is aimed for supporting the uh, PhD students. And the second one is a uh, Young Scientist Award, which is general young scientist, which is uh, uh, who is the, uh, under the age of 35. So uh, the first one is applies only to PhD students, and the second one applies to uh, all the young scientists, uh, including uh, students, but they should be under 35 age, uh, 35 years of age. And the uh, what is uh, what is uh, uh, very good for these two programs is uh, the winners uh, for the student paper competition receive uh, cash awards, which can be used for uh, purchasing uh, air tickets and also which can also used uh, for uh, partial uh, expenses for uh, hotel accommodation. And also, a similar uh, financial support is also possible for Young Scientist Award, uh, which contains uh, free registration. Uh, you don't have to pay for registration fee, and also free accommodation. So free registration and free accommodation, uh, very important financial support coming from ERC. And uh, uh, like this, you know, you know RC is always uh, considering uh, to uh, uh, support the young scientists who are either students or general young scientists. So this is very, very important activity. And uh, I'm going to omit uh, explaining the uh, this picture, but uh, this uh, uh, this picture shows the uh, structure of the RC with uh, relationships between uh, RC and other international science community and also the national uh, uh, committees. But I'm, I'm going to skip some uh, details of the explanation of this uh, 
uh, picture. And uh, uh, this is the this is taken from the Earth website, and uh, uh, by use by spending uh, the next uh, several minutes, uh, I'm going to explain uh, structure of the Earth. The one of the very important uh, Earth structure is the Earth board. Earth board consists of a president, an immediate past president, and secretary general, and four vice president. So these are uh, seven people. And uh, Earth Board is a kind of a governing body for all kinds of activities by Earth. So Earth Board uh, uh, always uh, work uh, very hard for the future uh, activities of Earth. And uh, by the way, I'm one of the uh, vice presidents. And if you if you go to this uh, link, then uh, you can see. Uh, this uh, introduction of the RC board. And uh, in addition to RC board, there's also uh, RC Secretariat, which is located in uh, Ghent, Belgium. And RC Secretariat is uh, at the Ghent University. And uh, Secretariat consists of uh, Secretary General and uh, three Assistant Secretary Generals and two, uh, two Secretaries. So this uh, is first is uh, kind of earthy activities, okay. And uh, you know, in the in the previous uh, two or three slides, I explained the uh, top structure of the earthy. But uh, in addition to earthy board and earthy secular art, there are also uh, another uh, very important uh, uh, structure, which are called uh, Earth Commissions, and uh, there are there are actually uh, ten commissions A through K. If you take a look, if you take a look at the first line to the last line, uh, probably you have noticed that uh, the, uh, I is missing. A B C D E F G H and, and J and K, and I'm sorry. I uh, I also don't know why I is missing, but uh, uh, there is a total of uh, ten commissions which can cover the radio science in both the science and engineering areas. Right? You can take a look. Then you can notice that uh, spectrum of Earth is very broad. This is not the case for I two pre. Okay. And uh, this slide shows the structure of the each uh, Earth Commission. And each uh, Earth Commission uh, has uh, four officials, four officers. The uh, chair, uh, each commission has chair and vice chair and ECR. ECR is an early career representative. And in order to be elected, uh, in order to be elected as a ECR, you should be uh, under the age of 35 years. So 35 years limit is uh, the condition for uh, standing for the election of the uh, early career representative. So the activities of each commissions uh, can be done by these four uh, commission officers. And uh, as I explained in the uh, previous uh, slides, uh, RC runs uh, three big uh, flagship meetings, GAS, AT RASC, and AP RASC. And most important role of the commission officers, these four, four people, is to plan and coordinate uh, scientific programs of the RC flagship meetings. So this is very important. And as I said, the uh, there is the uh, there is one uh, flagship meeting every year. Uh, the commission officers are always uh, working very hard for the promising future of the RC. And uh, this slide shows uh, which countries which countries are members of the RC. So we say 
uh, member committees. Member committees uh, implies uh, country or region uh, which are uh, members of uh, RC. And if you count, if you count the number of countries, regions, then uh, you know, we will know that uh, 44. So at the moment, uh, the number of the member committees, uh, member country regions, are 44. And India is here. Okay. And uh, uh, in addition to the RC board, Earth Secretariat and, and the Earth Commissions, the uh, activities uh, run by Earth member committees are also very important because uh, Earth uh, gets, uh, Earth gets uh, 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 financial, uh, financial support from uh, all the uh, RC member committees. That's the reason why uh, RC is very important in uh, keeping the uh, close connections with uh, member countries, regions. And uh, uh, this is the structure of the uh, RC member committee. Each uh, member committee has president and secretary. So there are uh, two persons on the top. And in addition to these uh, two persons, there are also commission uh, representatives, which is uh, called Commission Official Member of uh, A through K. So the total number of the uh, uh, officials of uh, RC, each uh, RC member committee is uh, 10 plus 2 is equal to 12. Uh, 12 people are representatives of uh, RC member uh, committees. And uh, roles, uh, the roles of the Earth Member Committees is this. Um, you know, in order to, uh, as you can uh, make a guess, uh, RC flagship meetings, which are uh, GAS, AT RASC, and AP RASC, uh, three of these uh, flagship meetings cannot be successful unless uh, we, we, we have uh, as many number as possible for the participants on papers. So the contribution from the uh, RSM member committees to flagship meetings is very important in terms of the number of papers and number of participants. So the papers and participants coming from the uh, RSM member committees is very important for uh, the uh, economic situation of the RC. And uh, as I said in the uh, previous uh, slide, uh, uh, member committee's activities is to run the regional RC meeting or national RC meetings. And in many uh, RC member committees, uh, uh, the regional uh, meetings or national meetings are organized and held uh, frequently. And for India, uh, the that is the uh, RCRS, Regional Conference on Radio Science. And if you uh, uh, if you don't know if you don't know the RCRS meeting in India, you can go to the website and search RCRS. Then you can easily uh, find the RCRS meetings information. And uh, this is the uh, I uh, I'd like to give you the. A very important information for the uh, history, uh, history of the uh, uh, RC. And uh, um, I told you at the beginning of my uh, presentation, RC was founded in 1919. This means uh, this year is uh, 2021, uh, right? So the RC. Uh, RC passed the 100 years anniversary of uh, of uh, 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 foundation. So, uh, in celebrating the 100 years of the RC, uh, this uh, very thick book was published uh, this year. 
And this is a very thick book, uh, more than uh, more than 600 pages. And the title of this book is 100 Years of the International Union of Radio Science. And the editors are these three persons. The Philip Wilkinson is the past uh, president of RC, and Paul Cannon is the immediate past uh, president. And then uh, Ross Stone is uh, assistant secretary general. So these three uh, editors uh, did a, a tremendous job in uh, editing the uh, 100 years of uh, RC. And what is good, uh, what is very good for this uh, uh, thick book is uh, if you're interested in getting this book, you don't have to buy. And you can, uh, there is a free copy uh, as long as, as long as uh, uh, you want to have only uh, a PDF, then uh, uh, you don't have to, uh, you don't have to pay. You know, you just, uh, uh, this is the, uh, uh, this is a free copy, can be downloaded by uh, going to uh, this link. And, uh, uh, and this is a very uh, detailed book. So if you uh, if you download if you download this book from this uh, uh, link and read, then uh, you can know lots of information, lots of very important information since uh, uh, since the Earth was founded. So I would suggest that uh, all of you uh, joining uh, today's uh, webinar. Uh, can download this uh, uh, free copy from this link. By the way, there are uh, there are several scientists in the uh, picture on the front cover, and this is the founding fathers. You know. and this is uh, founding fathers of Earth, which was taken uh, uh, in 1914. So this is a very important book. And uh, I have copied the uh, introduction of the uh, RC 100 years book. And uh, as I said, uh, RC was founded in 1919, shortly after the end of the World War One. And after uh, after the end of World War One, uh, international uh, organization by name International Research Council was organized. And uh, uh, four uh, uh, four scientific union were members of this uh, international research council, and one of the four unions was Union Internationale de Radio Telegraphy Scientific, which is uh, uh, can be translated into English like uh, International Union of uh, Radio uh, Telegraphic uh, Science. So. This was the this uh, radio telegraphic science union was the uh, original uh, starting point of RC, and then the first uh, general assembly was held in 1922. Uh, okay, so what is important for uh, the RC is uh, 1919 the. Uh, International uh, uh, Union Inter International Union of Radio Telegraphic uh, Science Sciences was founded, which uh, later uh, became uh, Earth. So that uh, this is the year 1919 is the year when uh, Earth was formed. Okay, and uh, 19 uh, and then 1928. Uh, Union changed its name to the current uh, name, which is uh, URSI, RC. And uh, this uh, very thick book uh, contains a collection of the articles written by uh, 20 uh, member committees and all the 10 uh, RC commissions, plus uh, one overview historical article. So, as I said, the number of male committees uh, all over the world is uh, currently 44. And uh, RC headquarters sent invitation to all the member countries 
uh, all the uh, member country which is uh, 44 uh, member committees however some of the member committees uh, were uh, very busy uh, uh, at the time so uh, some of the member committees uh, uh, could not be in time for writing the articles uh, before publication of this book so eventually uh, the, the total number of member committees uh, which uh, contributed to this uh, thick book uh, by writing the articles is uh, 20. And uh, this was uh, published uh, just uh, uh, several months ago. So I would, uh, I would suggest uh, all of you, all of you uh, joining uh, today's uh, webinar uh, uh, download the uh, this book from this link uh, after the after the uh, uh, today's seminar. Okay, I assume that the Professor Bhattacharya will uh, uh, forward the uh, uh, original uh, uh, slide together with. Uh, recorded file to all of you uh, joining uh, today's uh, webinar so that uh, uh, you don't have to write, you know, you don't have to write, write at the moment um, on your paper. And uh, this is the uh, contents of the uh, RC 100 years book. And as I said, uh, 20, uh, a total of 20 member committees uh, contributed to this book, uh, writing the articles. So this is the uh, uh, member committee's list, list of the uh, member committees which contributed to this book. And I was uh, searching, uh, I was uh, from the uh, index, I was searching India, but uh, I couldn't find India's Indian chapter. So probably uh, uh, Indian Earth Committee uh, couldn't uh, complete uh, writing a uh, writing a, a chapter for this book, but please remember, uh, please remember that India is very strong. Uh, India is very strong in the radio science research, and uh, uh, many years ago, the RC General Assembly and Scientific uh, Symposium uh, was held in uh, New Delhi. So that was uh, uh, that was a great success. Uh, of the uh, General Assembly and Scientific Symposium in the uh, uh, history. So, uh, you know, you should remember that India is one of the uh, strongest, uh, one of the strongest uh, country uh, where the uh, radio science research is performed uh, very actively. And after the uh, after the chapters uh, written by member committees, uh, there's also a part written by uh, uh, 10 uh, scientific commissions from A through K. So this is the uh, uh, content of the 100 years uh, book for RC. So this is very interesting and very important book. And uh, 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 well, uh, I think uh, I should uh, speed up my speaking. Um, uh, in the uh, next topic, uh, I'm going to uh, introduce the next uh, two flagship meetings, which are, are going to be held in uh, 2022 and 2023. The first one is this one, RCATAP Rusk meeting. The reason why we use uh, this name was because uh, the reason written here, because of the pandemic uh, problem, the uh, AT Rask meeting, which was originally uh, going to be held in uh, 2021, was uh, shifted to uh, 2022 because of this uh, pandemic. And originally, the Asia Pacific meeting was going to be held in. Uh, 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 2022. Uh, ah, no, excuse me, uh, 2023. But uh, 
uh, because of the pandemic, uh, unexpected uh, pandemic situation, uh, the uh, AT Rusk, which was scheduled originally in 2021, was shifted to 2022. Accordingly, uh, there was a discussion by the Earth Board to combine uh, the Atlantic meeting together with uh, Asia Pacific meeting uh, into one big conference and uh, uh, this uh, ATAP meeting is going to be held uh, next year uh, by a combination of the AT meeting and AP meeting, okay? Atlantic meeting and Asia Pacific meeting as, a, as an exception. And the, if you go to this site, uh, you will know the details of this conference. So if you, uh, if you are a, a graduate student uh, who are uh, working towards a PhD degree in the area of radio science, uh, you can uh, take a look at the website to consider uh, participation in this meeting, uh, which is going to be held next year. And deadline information is here. Now we can take a look later again. And uh, I, uh, I'm from Japan, so I, I would like to uh, introduce uh, with a little bit more emphasis uh, uh, for your uh, uh, information. And uh, the General Assembly and Scientific Symposium is going to be held in uh, Sapporo, Japan in 2023. And uh, probably some of you may know, Sapporo is a place where the Winter Olymp Olympic Games was held uh, many years ago. So Sapporo is a venue of the uh, uh, GAS, uh, General Assembly and Scientific Symposium, which is uh, going to be held in uh, 2023. So I will give a brief, uh, I will give, the, give you the information briefly. And uh, gas is going to be held in August, and uh, the venue is this, and host is the uh, Japanese Earth Committee. And I will, uh, I serve as general chair of this uh, General Assembly and Scientific Symposium, which is going to be held in Sapporo. And access to Sapporo, for example, from India is, uh, uh, I didn't check uh, very details of the uh, flights, but uh, probably uh, uh, you should first uh, come to Tokyo, either to Narita Airport or Haneda Airport. Then you can uh, change the flight uh, from from Tokyo to the northern island, which is Hokkaido. Most northern island is Hokkaido. So in order to go from uh, Tokyo to uh, the venue of the uh, GAS 2023, uh, you should uh, you should better take a flight, a two-hour flight, from Tokyo to Sapporo. Then uh, it's uh, the venue is very near uh, Sapporo Airport. And uh, there are uh, many sightseeing spots in uh, Sapporo, and Sapporo is uh, also the best uh, uh, best uh, known uh, sightseeing. Uh, uh, spot uh, known in Japan. So if you come to Sapporo, you can enjoy you can enjoy uh, beautiful scenery and also uh, very nice uh, cuisine. And I uh, for uh, for here I I just want, want to uh, tell that we welcome you to Sapporo in 2020 on the occasion of the uh, gas. So you can. Uh, consider uh, coming to uh, Japan on the occasion of the uh, RC meeting. And a membership of RC. The membership of RC, uh, there are three categories. The first one is the RC fellow. The second one is the RC senior member. And, and the last one is the RC corresponding member. And uh, if, you, if you attend the uh, uh, RC uh, flagship meeting, you will automatically become the corresponding member. But in order to become a senior member, there will be a review process for your application. So you, uh, there are some conditions for 
uh, being elected as a senior member. One of them is uh, uh, one of them is uh, is that you should uh, you should attend uh, our practice meeting uh, frequently, right? So this is one of the conditions uh, for application to RC membership. But what is good for RC individual membership is uh, uh, unlike unlike the uh, IGB, you don't have to pay. You know, you you don't have to pay membership fee. Membership fee is free. So as long as as long as uh, you attend the uh, RC uh, General Assembly and Scientific Symposium once. You you first uh, become uh, RC corresponding member, and after uh, several years research uh, experiences in RC community, you can apply for senior membership, right? And uh, uh, publication activities is uh, like this: uh, radio science letters. Uh, there are three. Uh, uh, there are two uh, publications by RC. The first one is radio science letters. The second one is the radio science bulletin, and the radio science letters is a, a peer-reviewed uh, uh, RC journal, which uh, was uh, uh, which which appeared uh, several years ago. And this is still a young journal, but uh, this is a uh, uh, this has uh, this received a great uh, reputation in the radio science uh, activity, uh, radio science community. Okay. So if you if you already if uh, there are graduate students uh, working towards the PhD, and if you are ready to submit a uh, short paper, uh, then uh, you can submit. You can consider submitting your article to radio science letters. And the second one is a radio science bulletin, which has uh, a long history. And uh, uh, you know, if you if you go to this uh, website, then you can easily go to uh, the site of the radio science bulletin. And uh, this is the uh, open access uh, journal. And this publish the review paper and general interest articles. So there are some differences between the radio science bulletin and radio science letters, and also the uh, uh, radio science, uh, which is not the publication by RC, but published by American Geophysical Union (AGU). But uh, this uh, radio science journal is uh, sponsored by RC, so that uh, there is a close connection between the RC activities and this uh, radio science journal. So this is the end of uh, part one. Uh, in part one, uh, I explained uh, uh, fundamental information on RC so that uh, some of you, uh, some of you uh, uh, have have uh, interest in contributing to RC. And I hope that uh, first uh, you, I would suggest uh, you download the uh, RC 100 Years book and learn what is the uh, uh, what is the outcome of the RC in the past uh, 100 years? Then uh, you can consider becoming a RC member by joining the RC flagship meetings. That is the end of the part one. And part two of my uh, talk is uh, uh, wind up technique, uh, which is one of the rigorous methods of solution for electromagnetic wave problems. I, I would like to uh, give you some. Uh, brief uh, background of the Wiener technique. And uh, I assume that uh, all of you know the basic electromagnetic theory, like uh, uh, Maxwell's equation, and the wave equation, and bundle condition. So uh, I, uh, I, I would like to assume that all of you know uh, this uh, uh, kind of uh, equations and the relation. And uh, as uh, uh, as many of you know, that the uh, following conditions are always required for the uniqueness of the solution for electromagnetic scattering problems. Let me read because uh, all of these are very important. 
if you consider uh, skating by uh, smooth obstacles, I mean uh, obstacles with smooth surfaces. Smooth means there are no uh, sharp edges on the surface of the obstacle. In this case, and of course, uh, since you are considering the electromagnetic waves, uh, your solution should satisfy Maxwell's equations. And also, uh, your solution sat should satisfy wave equations. In addition to these uh, partial differential equations, uh, your solution also should satisfy boundary conditions if you consider uh, uh, different uh, media problems. And the third one, uh, uh, I think uh, some of you don't know this condition. But I, uh, I think that uh, everybody, everybody knows Maxwell's equation, wave equations, and boundary conditions. And third conditions, radiation condition. Radiation condition is the, uh, uh, indicates the behavior of the scalar field at infinity, right? So radiation condition governs the uh, behavior of the scalar field at infinity. And if the space is lossy, lossy means uh, the, your uh, scalar field cannot propagate to infinity. Right? The, uh, your scalar field uh, should decay you know, because of the loss, because of the existence of the loss. And if you consider the lossy medium, then, as I said, uh, the scalar field from the obstacle should decay uh, uh, at infinity. So there are, no, there are no scalar field at infinity. However, if you consider lossless medium, what happens? If you consider lossless medium, the, the scalar waves uh, doesn't decay. This means the scalar field can propagate at infinity. In that case, how, uh, can, uh, how can we specify the behavior of the uh, scalar waves at infinity? Okay? So this second case is uh, governed by the so-called Sommerfeld radiation condition. The Sommerfeld radiation condition specifies the asymptotic behavior of the scatter field at infinity if you consider the lossless medium. So there are, there are two kinds of radiation conditions like this. So the third one is very important. And in addition to the, uh, these three conditions, if you consider obstacles with edges, what happens? And of course, the, uh, the solution should satisfy Maxwell's equation together as well as wave equations and boundary conditions. And of course, radiation condition, like I said in the first uh, case. In addition to these three conditions, we need the so-called edge condition to guarantee the uh, existence and the uniqueness of the solution from the mathematical point of view. And uh, you can uh, you can understand very easily uh, if I if I explain the uh, uh, the Maxwell's equations, you know, Maxwell's equations and wave equations are both partial differential equations, right? This means the function, the function should be, uh, uh, the functions uh, should be differentiable in terms of the variables, right? However, if there are edges of the surface of the obstacle, what happens is uh, you cannot differentiate, right? If there are sharp edges on the surface of the obstacle, what happens, uh, please remember, this is very important, if there are sharp edges, 
you cannot differentiate in the neighborhood of, uh, of the edges, okay? This uh, uh, comes to the so-called edge condition. Edge condition is required for the uh, case where the obstacle has uh, sharp edges. And uh, in the region, in the neighborhood of the edges, we don't use, we don't use uh, uh, boundary conditions, okay? Instead, we use edge condition. The edge condition can be explained uh, simply like this. Uh, the total energy, total energy stored in the neighborhood of the edges should always finite. Okay? Energy, you know, as you know, the energy should be finite everywhere. But the component, component, I, I mean, uh, electric field or magnetic field uh, can diverge at the edges. However, the total energy should be finite always, uh, uh, always uh, in the neighborhood of the edges. So, uh, in order to guarantee the uh, existence and uniqueness of the solution for the scattering by obstacles, we always, uh, if, you, uh, if you treat a problem uh, from a uh, uh, mathematically uh, rigorous point of view, uh, in addition to Z3, uh, we also need to impose the uh, so-called edge condition. Okay? Uh, I think uh, uh, I uh, I I like to spend uh, uh, ten more uh, minutes to try to complete my uh, uh, talk. Uh, okay, please okay. go ahead. Don't worry. Okay, I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry about the delay, but uh, uh, no, it's well, okay. Uh, it's okay, please. So Wienerhoff technique. Uh, Wienerhoff technique is one of the uh, one of the rigorous method solution that takes into account all the mathematical requirements, existence, uniqueness, etc. And this this Wienerhoff technique was invented a uh, long, long time ago in uh, 1931. And this paper was written by two uh, famous mathematicians. But uh, this paper was not uh, apply, was not used to actual problems until uh, 1946. So uh, during uh, this uh, 15 years, this paper existed only in the mathematics uh, field world. But in 1964, the Wienerhoff technique was applied for the first time to wave scattering problems independently by uh, Copson, mathematician in UK, and Schwinger. Schwinger is the, uh, some of you may know, Julian Schwinger is a Nobel Prize in Physics laureate. And uh, these two scientists uh, applied for the first time the Wienerhoff technique to solve the half plane, the so called Sommerfeld half plane problems which was first sold by Sommerfeld himself in 1896. And the Wienhoff technique, the idea was to solve uh, this uh, internal equations of the first kind. This is the, uh, this is the first kind in internal equations. In this equation here, the unknown function is f. And this k is uh, called a kernel of the internal equations. And and g of z on the right hand side uh, of the equation is a uh, known function. And the uh, problem is to determine the unknown function which is f of z prime uh, by using the so-called Wienerhoff technique. And Wienerhoff technique uh, is uh, uh, known as 
splitting splitting a function of uh, k of alpha of a complex variable uh, into the uh, two functions, one of which is regular in the upper half plane, the another one is regular in the lower half plane of the uh, complex plane. And this k of alpha is the, uh, if I uh, explain simply, this uh, k of alpha is a free transform of the kernel arising in the uh, Wienhoff type integral equations. And uh, by using uh, this uh, relation, uh, uh, I, I, don't, uh, I don't have time to go into the details, but uh, I, I just want to say here that uh, this uh, splitting of the functions into plus and minus functions can be used essentially uh, for the solution of the Wienerhoff type integral equations. And uh, 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 there are uh, there are uh, four typical uh, geometries which uh, I've written on this slide. The first one is the typical uh, geometry which can be uh, solved by exactly by using a Wiener technique. This is semi-infinite, semi-infinite uh, plane surface. Okay, with uh, a zero thickness. So this uh, problem can be solved exactly by using Wienhoff technique. But if you if you change uh, this structure by a strip with finite width, then uh, you can still apply the Wienhoff technique. But uh, you cannot solve the problem exactly. But you, you can solve uh, asymptotically by assuming the strip width large compared with the wavelengths. So this is the modified, uh, this is called the modified Wienerhoff geometry of the first kind. And this is the second kind geometry. Uh, the reason for calling this as second kind uh, modified geometry is because, you know, first uh, geometry has uh, zero thickness, but uh, this has a finite thickness case. So uh, this uh, diffraction problem can be solved by the Wienhoff technique, but uh, only approximately. Okay, and if I combine the first modification together with second modification, you can see this uh, thick strip, and this is also solved by the Wienhoff technique to get the very highly accurate solutions. Okay. And uh, uh, if you're interested in uh, 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 trying to know uh, more details about the Wiener technique, you can uh, read my uh, paper uh, written here. And also, uh, there are also, uh, I've also written uh, books and books chapters information on the Wiener technique. You can take a look later again. Okay, and then uh, last topic is uh, uh, part three, which is actually the title of my uh, presentation today. Radar cross section analysis of the finite parallel play waveguide with material loading, a rigorous Wienhoff approach. But since I don't have time to go into the details, uh, I, I just want to explain the uh, historical background related to this geometry and what is the motivation of my research for analyzing this problem. And uh, diffraction scattering by open ending waveguide cavities is an important subject in connection with the prediction and rejection of the radar cross section of a target. And cavity diffraction problems are very important because uh, if you consider jet engine, jet engine intakes, jet engine intakes can be modeled as a uh, certain geometry of cavity. That's the reason why uh, uh, type of the structure is very important in prediction and reduction of the red, red cross section. And in the past, uh, there are two very popular uh, uh, procedures, which are numerical techniques and high frequency techniques. However, uh, these solutions are not uniformly valid for arbitrary cavity dimension, arbitrary frequencies. However, as I explained uh, uh, in the Wiener Hub technique section, 
Uh, this mean up technique is a very powerful method for analyzing wave scattering problem rigorously. And the mean up technique, as I said, this technique can be effectively uh, applied to cavity diffraction problem because this technique uh, incorporates all the uh, necessary requirements like uh, uh, wave equation, Maxwell's equation, boundary conditions, radiation condition, and edge condition. And uh, in this uh, uh, analysis, I have considered this structure. This is the two-dimensional geometry. This means there are two uh, there are two parallel uh, strips, which is a uniform into the direction of the uh, uh, into the direction perpendicular to the screen. So this is the two-dimensional problem, and you have a uh, four-layer material loaded between these two plates. And uh, uh, this problem can be uh, solved by the Wienhoff technique uh, by a little bit complicated procedure. And uh, since I don't have time, I directly uh, go to the... Uh, uh, I would like to show you the uh, results, which are the uh, numerical uh, examples, uh, which gives you an idea uh, of the box scattering. So uh, this is the uh, this is the uh, two parallel strips, right? And in between these two plates, uh, there are four layers. And in numerical computations, uh, I I chose this layer one as perfect conductor. Okay, so layer one is a perfect conductor, so that uh, you have uh, two uh, cavities on both sides of the waveguide, and on the on the left side. The uh, left side uh, part is empty. However, the right side uh, space is uh, loaded with uh, three-layer materials. This is a difference between the right uh, part and the red part of the uh, waveguide. And uh, 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 this is the numerical results of the uh, box scattering field. This is the uh, monostatic RCS, monostatic radar cross section is the box scattering uh, calculations for E polarization. E polarization means uh, electric field is perpendicular to the screen. Okay, and uh, I uh, I wrote uh, four uh, different curves in this uh, graph, and uh, the horizontal axis horizontal axis is the incident angle. Because monostatic means bus scattering fields. So if you take the incidence angle as uh, 60 degrees, then what you calculate is a completely bus scatter direction. So uh, monostatic RCS at the 60 degrees means you calculate the bus scattering field at 60 degrees. Okay? And uh, uh, zero degrees is. Uh, the case where the incident field go comes to this direction, and 90 degrees is the normal incidence to the uh, upper plate, and 180 degrees means the normal incidence as the opposite uh, side of the waveguide. Okay, and uh, uh, if you take a look at this figure, uh, this. Uh, Long, uh, long dash, short dash lines are empty waveguide. Empty waveguide means there's nothing, there's nothing between two plates. And uh, the rest of the uh, curves are all uh, uh, cavity structures. This means there's the pathway conducting layer inside the waveguide. And the differences among uh, three curves is uh, uh, this uh, bold line is cavity with no loading. No loading means there's only a public conducting layer uh, in, the, in the waveguide region, so that uh, there's nothing on the left uh, right cavity, okay? And uh, a gray line means a cavity with two layer loading with uh, these uh, material parameters, okay? This means uh, the left cavity is empty, but right cavity is filled with uh, two-layer uh, material. 
the last one here the last one here is a category three layer loading and actually uh, uh i have chosen the existing uh radar absorbing radar absorbing material with a name immersion coming an 73 and uh if you take a look at this figure uh uh, for the range 90 to 180 degree degrees. Uh, this region from 90 to 180 degrees is a case where you move from uh, normal incidence to uh, the direction of, of the uh, opposite side. However, from 0 to 90 degrees, you can clearly see the difference uh, in the right cavity. This means uh, this is the uh, three-layer loaded cavity, and this gray one is uh, two-layer loaded cavities, and the upper curve is the empty cavity. So what you see from this uh, uh, graph is, uh, uh, with an increase of the number of layers, the uh, box scattering is reduced with an increase of the uh, number of layers. Okay, and. Uh, this zero degrees peak is uh, uh, the reflection, reflection from the uh, uh, material boundary here. Uh, and this peak is a reflection from the material boundary. And this uh, peak uh, along the 90 degrees is the, uh, uh, is the reflection from the upper plate. And 180 degree peak is a uh, reflection from the, uh, the public conducting layer, PEC layer, at the opposite direction. Okay. So, uh, so this is the uh, ten uh, ten wavelengths case. KB equal to 31.4 is equal to ten wavelengths by ten wavelengths case, a square shape cavity by 10, 10 wavelengths by 10 wavelengths, which corresponds to a relatively high frequency. However, uh, I'm, going, I'm not going to show you the raw frequency case because I don't have time. Uh, uh, the Reinhardt technique uh, is very rigorous uh, so that uh, it can be, uh, it can uh, consider uh, from very low to very high frequency range. We can go down to even uh, one wavelength case if uh, we use a VNAF solution. So, uh, uh, I'm sorry I didn't have uh, enough time to explain uh, some analytical details, but uh, because of the time limitations, I'm going to stop here. So, thank you very much for your attention. Yeah, thank you, Professor Kobayashi, for the wonderful presentation. So there are a few questions. So may I just uh, ask Shombit Kumar Ghosh, can you please unmute and ask directly the question to Professor Kobayashi? Hello, Shombit. Hello, Hi, sir. Yeah, yeah, please go yes. ahead. So I am asking, sir, is there any limitations? Mathematical limitations of this technique? Um, it's, a, it's a good question. Uh, you know, the uh, Wiener technique is rigorous, but um, if, uh, if you consider the curved structure, which cannot coincide with the uh, Kaibirinia coordinates, then uh, uh, it, it's uh, it's not easy to uh, analyze a scattering by a curved structure generally. So curved stru structure, curved structure, uh, which does not coincide with the uh, surface of the Kavirinia coordinates, cannot be treated by the Wiener technique rigorously. That's one restriction. Okay. So okay, in order to in order to apply the Wiener technique rigorously, the surface of the observer should coincide with the one of the Kavirinia coordinates. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. So mm -hmm. I have another question. Yeah, please. Is yeah. there any limitation? Is there any limitation on the number of the substrates or loading? I mean, it's number of loading. Number what? 
number of loading number of loading, loading. Number of loading. yes yeah okay uh well uh, i would say uh uh, uh, pra- uh theoretically i would say theoretically uh, uh there is no limitation of the number of layers however actually uh you know uh, i can uh, okay since uh i'm using the winap technique to analyze uh, scattering rigorously uh i uh i i have to take into account the multiple reflection you know pop, multiple reflection transmission rigorously so uh, if you if you increase the number of layers, like uh, ten layers or twenty layers, then uh, still uh, the winner uh, winner technique can work. But uh, I mean, uh, from a theoretical point of view, the winner technique can work. But actually, uh, uh, it's very very hard. It's very very hard because uh, if you have, uh, for example, ten layers inside the waveguide. It's uh, it's very difficult to take into account all kinds of uh, multiple uh, scattering. So I would say uh, uh, it's a uh, very hard, very hard to consider the case of uh, arbitrary number of layers. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. You are welcome, Professor Kobashi. I personally have one question that. Uh, Will this uh, RCS, this this kind of computation, whenever you are doing by using Wienerkopf technique, you know that there are three distinct regions depending upon the object of uh, uh, the particular target. Like we can have the Rayleigh region or the mean scattering or the optical one. So can mm-hmm. they be computed by this particular method in those cases also? Yes, yes. Uh, you know, if you uh, if we consider specific geometries, mm-hmm. then. Uh, uh, I can I can uh, I can calculate the uh, all kinds of scattering uh, for all kinds of frequencies. Okay, okay. And another one but, I want. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Please, please, yeah, please. Fast you, no, fast you finish off. Then I am going. Ahead. No, no. Please go ahead. Yeah, yeah. What I was also asking that uh, can we also compute like the bi-static uh, RCS also by this? Yeah, 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 yeah. No, no problem. Biostatic, uh, biostatic case is um, uh, much simpler compared to the monostatic. Mon- mm-hmm. The reason is because uh, if you, as long as the win up technique is applied, uh, mm-hmm. what happens uh, in the numerical computation is that you have to solve the uh, matrix equations numerically. Mm-hmm. But uh, you know, uh, for the monostatic RCS, uh, the computation time uh, is uh, computation time is much. Uh, much more compared to the uh, biostatic case. So biostatic case is uh, much simpler. The reason is because uh, biostatic case we, I, we we can fix the instance angle, right? If we if we fix the uh, instance angle, then uh, computation is becomes much simpler. So biostatic is much simpler compared to the monostatic case. Okay. Okay. So any any further questions from any any other and any other participant? Any, any other questions? Please go ahead. Hello. This technique can be applied irrespective of whether it is we are using a bi-static case or monostatic case. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can we can uh, we can compute uh, both uh, monostatic and bi-static cases. Is there any other question? Please kindly go ahead. Kindly unmute and go ahead. See, the number of layers which are used are quite complex. So how do they really model them? Because in actual case, suppose you're looking for a, a RCS of a, a mine, then before you really reach the mine, you will find that there are a lot of other material uh, materials with different dielectrics yeah 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 that's a that's an, uh, that's an issue uh, in the uh, rigorous method i see so so, so you, you, know, you know it's uh, you know that I, I can say like this you know uh, 
uh, n layer n layer case uh, n n n layer case cannot be can, <laughs> cannot be found by using a kind of a mathematical induction right mathematical <laughs> mathematical induction doesn't work you know because uh, because of the existence of multiple di multiple scattering you know <laughs> so if uh, mathematical induction can be used then uh, easily uh, uh, I can I can obtain the uh, solution for n layer case, but uh, of course, of course, uh, because of the existence of multiple scattering, uh, you know, for each uh, case, uh, I have to do the same uh, very complicated analysis. So that is the that is the uh, issue for uh, actually uh, there is uh, I would say there is a limitation limitation of the Number of layers, but with the equivalent dielectric of the whole thing would do a better job. Yeah, yeah. So that is always better because mm -hmm. once you have see this dielectric can be separately analyzed and obtained, and that equivalent value can be obtained, and then we can make it even like a single dielectric. Mm. Yeah, that's. Uh, uh, I, I think that, that that may be true. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other question? Ah, sir, I have one question. Can we apply this yeah. on a gyrotropic material? Excuse me? Can we apply this method on a gyrotropic material? Suppose our layers are material having the gyrotropic property? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, I can, uh, the wind have, have technique can be applied also for this case. Okay, thank you. Any other question? Okay, so if there is no other question, so let's thank once again Professor Kobayashi for this wonderful presentation and for his time amidst from his extremely busy schedule to give a lecture in the banner of uh, IEEE MTTS student branch chapter IIT BHU. Uh, let me just, uh, before we wind up, let me just tell to all the participants that I got introduced to Professor Kobayashi in one of the RCRS events in New Delhi in 2015, uh, if Professor uh, Kobayashi uh, can uh. recall, yeah. So, <laughs> so what he was telling that about the RC events, so we were we basically met each other or get introduced with each other in that time and we are in regular touch thereafter in the very next year that i traveled to south korea in seoul in uh, 2016 ursi epidesk so where he was one of the organizing chairs and also that uh, in 2019 epidesk held in new delhi he took a pivotal role okay while getting some papers and everything so and he used to travel to India in semester from his extremely busy schedule. Again, I want to tell you that he's an active member in all these ones. And in fact, Actually, this I, time, I, uh, I like India. I like India very much, and I uh, yeah. I miss you know I miss I, I miss uh, going to India uh, since uh, pandemic. You know. Yeah, yeah. And I'm dreaming. The, yeah. the the la, la, the latest version of RCRS, which was organized by me incidentally. So we could be very happy if Professor Kobayashi could be here, but that time he was the departmental chair and got yeah, engaged yeah, with the yeah, academic yeah, activities at that time. Yeah, unfortunately, yeah. we missed him. But yeah, right I'm after sorry. that, uh, yeah, but right after that, we had this kind of lockdown and this pandemic has spread yeah, out. Yeah. And, uh, he was, and he also invited me to go and attend URSI General Assembly, which I had in, in also planned in last year in Rome but which couldn't happen. And this time it was there in hybrid mode. Yeah. So, yeah. so in fact, yeah, if the, if everything goes fine, in fact, uh, with this platform, I also simply advocate on behalf of Professor Kobayashi, try for, means already start thinking for submit some paper in URSI General Assembly and uh, mm -hmm. visit Japan. In yeah, fact, yeah. I personally visited Japan twice and believe me, it's a beautiful country. So all Thank of you, you who have you. not visited it, so, I must say that you will like it very much. Okay. Thank you. So, yeah, thanks, Professor Kobayashi, once again for this wonderful talk. So, uh, uh, so what? Let me just do that. If uh, so, Professor Kobayashi, may I just ask you to simply uh, stop sharing the screen, 
and uh, okay. uh, may, may i just request all the participants mm -hmm. to turn mm -hmm. on their to uh, turn on their video so that we can have a you know that virtual photo shoot over here with professor kobayashi may i just request all of you to turn on your videos thank you very much thank you very much for coming to my talk and i uh uh, I enjoyed very much, and uh, you know, I, I just want to uh, tell you that uh, I very much look forward to uh, seeing you again at one of the uh, future RC flagship meetings. Yes, sure, sure. So, Shambit, have you taken it? Shambit, you are mute. Yes, sir, it has been taken. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, Professor Kobayashi, I thank you very much and let thank me you. thank you thank you to all, all others also to uh, come to the to come to this platform and to, uh, to attend to this particular talk on this advanced topic. By the uh, way, how many? Thank you very much. People, uh, 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 Somak, uh, by the way, how many how many people yeah. uh, did attend this? Uh, like twenty? Uh, like uh, yeah, something around, around thirty-five. Something okay, twenty-five. Okay. Now okay. the number has uh, number have come down, but it was okay. 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 Thank yeah. you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we can keep in touch. Yeah. Sure. Sure. Sure.